Hello, greetings. You're welcome to the Narrow is Christ for All Nations and Brothers in ITV. Today, we want to talk about a world out of God's control. Is this world we are living in out of God's control? Has this world actually gone out of control? This is what a lot of people believe in. That the world we live in today, uh, some people actually believe to some extent that it was created by God. But another question is, is God really still in charge of this world? That's a question a lot of people ask. Okay, we believe that God created this world, but are we sure that God is still in charge? <laughs> this is a question a lot of people ask. Well, you can blame them for asking that question because that is where their wisdom um, can take them to. You as a believer, do you also believe in one way or the other that the world is out of control? Okay, if you believe that God controls everything in the world, do you still believe that God is in charge of your life and that your life is strictly under God's control? These are some of the questions we want to throw light on and get some answers from God. As we look at God's word today, let us pray. God, we thank you. You are good. Your goodness is beyond measure. Nobody can measure how good you are. Your wisdom is beyond any form of excavation. We can't fathom your, your wisdom. Even the works of your hands are beyond comprehension, beyond any kind of human searching and understanding. Lord, open our eyes to see the way you see things so that our questions can be reduced. There are lots of people who believe that you actually created the world, but they doubt your control. Some feel that, oh, God really created the world, but he has abandoned the world. Lord, we believe that you are still in charge. Therefore, Lord, speak to us in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please like this video and also share this video. You can share this video on YouTube. You can share it wherever you're watching us from. Please share this video. And for those of you who are willing to support our ministry, uh, our, our candidates are on the screen, including our U.S. bank account. You can support us if the Lord lays it in your heart. We don't preach money, but we also encourage you to give so that we can sustain the work of the ministry. So a lot of people now believe today that the world has actually gone out of God's control. How possible is that? Has this world gone out of God's control? This is a question that we need to ask. A lot of people who are Christians believe that, okay, the world has it actually gone out of God's control. But does God actually care about my life? Does he care about what I pass through? Does God actually care about the details of my life? If he cares, why is it that I pass through many of these troubles? Or oh, listen, uh, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, I told a Christian sister that God probably allowed some of these troubles to come to you, like not getting a job, disappointments in marriage, and ending up being single for so many years. I told her probably God actually allowed all these troubles to humble you and to bring you to subjection. A lot of times God actually allows uh, troubles, allows even Satan, his enemy, to trouble us, to pursue us, because he wants us to run to him and follow him when we are going astray. He allows it a lot of times when we are going astray. So let's look at the word of God today. Psalm 14, 1 to 3. The fool had said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. 
They have done abominable works. There is none that do it good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and see God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that do it good. No, not one. Listen, brethren, this is the situation of the world today. This wasn't the first time that people did whatsoever thing that comes across their mind. We have seen terrible situations whereby people would do anything that comes into their mind and believe that they are in charge. There is no more God, so we are in charge now. And we have to do anything we can do to make sure that we meet up with the demands of the times. People choose to live their lives the way they want because they feel that the one that's supposed to be in charge is no longer in charge. Now they can do anything they want to do with their lives. But we as believers, first of all, do you still believe that God is in charge of this world? Looking at the evils that are taking place every blessed day, do you still believe that God is in charge? Okay, if he is in charge, is he still in charge of the world? Is he still in charge of the church? Is he still in charge of your life, your family? I want to tell you that God is very much in charge. The fool had said in his heart, there is no God. Why? Because they are corrupt. They are corrupt. If they are not corrupt, they will not even uh, entertain that kind of thought in their hearts that there is no God. It is because they are corrupt. And because they are corrupt, they do abominable works. There was a time in the time of Noah where everybody, when everybody became corrupt, God did not spare that word. This is another time that people feel that, oh, God is asleep. In fact, some say that God is dead. Uh, Yuva Noah Harari is even projecting that there is no God, that God is in your mind. <laughs> that God doesn't even exist. That the new God now is Homo Dei. The God of men, that you are now the God. You are the God. We have to understand the times we are living in and be wise. Let's look at what happened in the time of the judges. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. This is exactly what is happening today. This is a time that the laws that we are made to guide humanity are being reversed. I was looking at a research work uh, recently. We were talking on the phone about dressing. And we saw that even just in the 19th century and in the 20th century, which is, which is about 100 years ago, even in the U.S., there were still laws that forbid females from, from putting on some certain clothes because they are classified as belonging to men. And men too were forbidden from wearing certain dresses because they were classified as belonging to women. But today it's no longer like that. As a matter of fact, you can say you are a woman and sue anybody that doesn't even recognize you as a woman. Even though if you still have your male organ within yourself. This is the kind of time we have come to live in, that people can identify to as, as cats, that, okay, from today, I want everybody to call me a cat <laughs> and choose their own pronouns. <laughs> That's the time we are living in. Everybody does whatsoever seems good to them. It is like a house where there is no leader. Judges 21, 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. There was no king. 
That is exactly what a lot of people think today, that, oh, there is no king anymore all over the world. There is no king, there is no government. Do it as thou wilt, and that should be the whole of the law. People now feel that you can do it the way you want, and that is the whole of the law. But I tell you that there is a king in heaven. There is a king of kings and the Lord of lords. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. This is exactly what is happening in the world today. Has the world actually gone out of God's control? No, it hasn't. In fact, God is the fountain of all wisdom. Before he created the world, he knew how the world is going to end. Don't ask me why he went ahead to create it. If you have the amount of wisdom God has, you will not ask that question. But we could be tempted to ask that question because we are limited in our knowledge. We are limited in our thinking. We are limited in our understanding. Even if God tries to make us understand, I don't even think that we will be able to comprehend why the world is like this. We may not even understand because um, there are things that we cannot understand in this realm. And I want to beg you to follow the word of God. I just remember the psalm. Let me try if I can put it on the screen. This is very, very important. I was sharing this with a Christian sister recently uh, during a Bible reading. We have to be careful and we have to know that God is in charge. He is still in charge of the world. He is still in charge of every single thing in the world. God is very much in charge. You may be passing through some levels of persecutions, maybe passing through some levels of difficulties, of temptations, but I want to tell you that God is in charge. Don't give up your faith on God. God is in charge. He will definitely come to your rescue. He will definitely vindicate you one day. Just keep trusting in God. Keep hoping that he lives and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If you do not give up, if you do not give up on your God, he will definitely reward you greatly one day. God is in charge of the world and you don't need to give up. Okay, so um, I'm going to, I have, this is Psalm 1, Psalm 131. Lord, my heart is not haughty. Look at the psalmist. He's saying my heart is not proud. My heart, as a matter of fact, is not proud. My heart is not haughty. This is what a lot of people lack today. Their heart is very proud. Their heart is very haughty. They are not humble. How do you know that your heart is haughty? How do you know that your heart is not humble yes there are ways you will know that you are not humble in your heart at all if you concern yourself with things that are more than your understanding the things that you shouldn't even think of the things that you shouldn't even question i remember some time ago when uh, i first got my holy ghost baptism I felt I could question God. I felt I had some right to even ask some questions. And I was so much concerned about things that are even beyond my human understanding. I asked God a lot of questions. I became confused because even in asking all those questions, I did not even seek answers from the word of God diligently. Lord, my heart is not haughty, Psalm 131, nor mine eyes lofty, neither do I exercise myself in great matters. I don't. Or in things too high for me, things too high for me to understand, 
Surely I have behaved, my, I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. My soul is quiet. Let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth and forever. Do you trust in God or you ask questions that are beyond you? Remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God because everyone that comes to him must believe that he exists and that he diligently, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Do you still trust in God that no matter what happens, God is on the throne? Do you know that I have come to a point, I say every time that God is always right. Anytime I feel I am wiser than God, that moment I don't even need my senses because that moment I am wrong. Anytime my human wisdom conflicts with God's ways, conflicts with the written word of God, anytime God doesn't make sense to me at all, I suspend all my senses and I live by what people call foolishness, the foolishness of God, because I know that God's foolishness is wiser than my wisdom. Are you still following? Do you follow or you have been deceived? Because you feel, oh, we need to ask questions. Where is God? Why would God allow my only child to die? Why is God allowing the sa to allowing Satan to be in charge of the world? Listen, he is a prince of the kingdom of the air. The whole world is under the power of the evil one, but not the church. God is in charge of the church. But I tell you, God in his own wisdom, when man fell, allowed justice to reign. But has God abandoned the world? No. I don't want this message to be too long, so let us proceed. Look at Psalm 94, 1 to 5, and then we'll continue. Um, let's read from 1 to 5 first. Psalm 94. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself, lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth, render a reward to the proud. O Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? These are questions asked by a child of God that, Lord, why are all these things happening? Look at the level of evil that is going on. Look at the level of abortion. Look at the level of child trafficking. There are people who specialize in sleeping with little children. Why are all this going on? Why? Verse 3. Oh Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? It's like the wicked are winning if you look at the world today. Verse 4, how long shall they alter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. If you are alive, how long will these things happen? These are the questions. <laughs> okay, let's move on. 6 to 11, Psalm 94. Verses 6, verse 6 to 11. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless, and yet God is quiet. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Israel regard it. Understand, ye brutish among the people, and you fools. When will you be wise? You see these things and you think there is no God. When will you be wise? When will you understand? He that planted the ear. Now listen to the question of a wise man. A question from a wise heart. He that planted the ear. Shall you not hear? Are you sure God is not listening to you? When you cry to him day and night. 
Are you sure God is deaf? Is he deaf? You believe that God is deaf? The God that created the ears, the God that created the eyes, the God that gave you eyes to see, doesn't he see your problems? Can't God provide for you? Can't he supply your needs? He that planted the ear shall not, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye shall he not see? He that chastises the hidden shall not he correct? He that teacheth man knowledge shall not he know? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of men that they are vanity. God knows everything. And I want to tell you that the God of heaven and earth is still in charge of the world. The world hasn't gone out of God's control. God is still in charge. But you know one thing, that God has set aside a day. Even the devil, he has a time. He is the prince of the kingdom of the air. But he has a short time. The devil has a time. A time that God is going to come and judge him. God allowed the devil to use an amount of power. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that in whom the God of this world had blinded their minds, had blinded the minds of them which believe not, the Bible calls him the God of this world. He is a prince. He is a prince of darkness. When he lost his position, God allowed him to be driven down to the earth without taking his knowledge from him. That is why he is a serpent, the ancient serpent. The serpent is the wisest of all the animals God created. Man is not an animal. So the serpent is not wiser than man. That's not what the Bible says. Let's read Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heaven. This is after Satan was thrown down from heaven. Therefore rejoice ye heaven, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. The devil has a time. He has a time. Remember what the demon said. Have you come to destroy us before our time? They have a time. Sure, they have a time. A time is coming that the devil who deceives the whole world, the false prophet that will be revealed, the Antichrist, the beast, all of them will be cast into the lake of fire. Look at Revelation. The same God who leaves him to operate now, that same God is going to send his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 20, 1, 2, 3. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless, bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. He has a time. I believe from the creation to the rapture is going to be about, about 6,000. And then you will have the, the rapture takes place. And then you have the new uh, you have the millennium, the reign of Christ on earth, physical reign of Christ on earth for a thousand years. 
So we have to be very, very watchful because a rapture can take place at any time. The world is about 6,000 years old now. We have to be very, very watchful. Every time, ask God to forgive you your sins. Ask God to, be, to keep you watchful so that you don't give up. So that you don't fall back to your vomit. The rapture can take place anytime. Seven is a number of completion. Seven is a number of completion. So God allows Satan to operate. And then he will come, bind him for 1,000 years, and after that 1,000 years, he will be released. Let's read verse 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more. That means it is even God who allows him to deceive the nations right now, till the 1,000 years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be lose a little season. Then he will be lose again. To continue to deceive the nations. So who told you that God is not in charge? Who said it that God has forgotten the world? He is the beginning and the ending. He is the Alpha and the Omega. God doesn't live in time. God lives in eternity. What you call tomorrow, there's no tomorrow before God. God is already there. What you call the end, there is nothing like the end before God. What we call time, according to us who are humans, what we call times and seasons and days and years, is just a little split of eternity. God lives in eternity. God doesn't live in time. There's nothing about, there's no years, no time in eternity. Eternity is a timeless time that started in a time that has no beginning and that we end in, a, in the ending that has no end. That's eternity. God doesn't live in time. God lives in eternity. So when the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, that Satan had but a short time. Look, 6,000 years is gone. Yet it is still reckoned as a short time. Because Satan wasn't created to live in time. Satan was created to live in eternity. So also mankind. Animals were created to live in time. The trees were created to live in time. But man wasn't created to live in time. That is why God breathed into the nursery of man the breath of life. And man became a living soul. God, God's life is eternal life. And that life that God gave to man is eternal life. That life is indestructible. So we have to understand that this is how these things work. God breathed into the nursery of man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That breath, spirit, is called Nishamo. It is everlasting. It doesn't die. Because we have that life from the very life of God. That is why when we leave this world, either through the rapture or through death, or through Jesus coming to live on earth with us and then take us home, before the renovation of the heavens and the earth and the letting down, the descending of the new Jerusalem, whichever way we will leave this world. There are only two destinations. 
and these two destinations are eternal abodes. It is a place, there are places of eternity, either heaven or hell. There are places of eternity. Don't be deceived. Some people say that, oh, hell is a grave, like the Jehovah's Witnesses. Hell is a grave. What about the lake of fire? Is the lake of fire the grave? Don't be deceived. God is not going to kill those who rebel against him. They will not die. They will be cast into the lake of fire. And those who do good, they will be in heaven. And then later, come to this world, the new Jerusalem, the bride of Christ. Praise God. Let's be wise. Let us know that God is still in charge of the world and that the world hasn't gone out of God's control. Let's read the same Revelation 20, but this time 7 to 9. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations. Again, this is for the second time. We shall in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compounds and compassed the camp of the saints, but and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So this shall not even be a, a battle, just fire coming down. We devour all of them. Fire can proceed from the mouth of God, from the mouth of Jesus Christ, and devour his enemies. Listen, God has set a day aside, and that day he is going to judge every single human being. Acts of Apostles chapter 17, verses 30 and 31. And the times... Listen very carefully. This is important. And the times of this ignorance, God winked. God winked at. That means God overlooked. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent because he had appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man that he, by that, by that man whom he had ordained, wherefore he had given assurance unto all men, in that he had raised him from the dead. Listen, brethren, God has set aside a day, and that day he will bring everything under judgment. He is quiet. When they were killing Jesus Christ, he was quiet. When they killed his prophets, he is always calm, he is always quiet. He doesn't vanish from heaven or just rain fire from heaven. No, God doesn't do that. Except on a rare occasion, according to his will and wisdom. So don't think that God is no longer in charge. But God in his own wisdom had set a day aside that is going to judge the world. Are you passing through troubles and you feel that, oh, God is no longer in charge of the world, so why don't I even compromise and start living my life the way I want? God is in charge. God is in charge of your life. He knows everything you are passing through. God is the creator of the sun, and all energy comes from the sun. All energy, every living thing, derives energy, either directly or indirectly from the sun. The maker of the sun, the maker of the moon, the maker of the oceans, the maker of whales, the maker of lions, the king of the jungle, the maker of elephants, that God is able to see you through. Are you sick? Don't give up. God allowed everything that is happening in this world today it is not because he is dead, but because he has a timeline. 
There are dispensations that God had put in place. Everything happening, the wars, the rumors of wars, the hunger, the death, God had already revealed them. They have been written down thousands of years ago. Read the book of Daniel. Look at artificial intelligence. Everything had been put down. So why do you think that God has forgiven, forgotten you? He hasn't forgotten you. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God has rewarded me and he is rewarding me for waiting upon him. I was telling someone yesterday, uh, was it yesterday or two days ago? Okay, but that should be a few days ago. I was telling someone a few days ago that if God asks me to jump down, I will jump. I just only need to confirm if he is the one speaking. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Don't follow the ways of those in the world. Please run hard after God. The world is not out of control. God is still in charge. Let us pray. Oh God, we know that your wisdom is beyond excavation and any kind of human understanding. Lord, reveal yourself to us more and more through signs, through wonders, through healings, through revelations, through visions in our dreams. Reveal yourself to us. Give us understanding through your word. Increase our faith so that our hearts will not be perplexed, so that our hearts will be stable on you. Let our hearts stay on you, O oh God, so that we can be focused. Help us, Almighty God. Help us, Almighty Savior. We love you and we trust you that you are able to see us through. Lord, help us to follow you. Help us to believe that you are alive and that you are in charge of the affairs of mankind. Lord, I have believed in you 100% that you exist. That's why I, I can't join those in the world. Even in my weakness, in my weak moments, I cry to you and I tell you that God, I still love you. I believe in you. And I cry that you strengthen me anytime I'm weak. Lord, help your children, even those who are weak. Help them to love you. Help them to believe in you. Help them to trust in you. I pray for as many who are passing through one challenge or the other. Those who are confused even right now. Those who doubt your existence. Those who ask, God, where are you? Are you still alive? Lord, enter their situations and provide for them in the name of Jesus. May the Lord God Almighty provide for you. May the Lord fight your battles for you. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord give you a job. Let God provide for you. Let God heal you. Receive your healing. Receive your miracle. Receive that divine intervention. Receive justice in that court case. Receive justice so that you can be delivered from every kind of oppression. Be free from demonic oppression. May the Lord God do something in your life now that will increase your faith in him. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Those of you who have been supporting our ministries, may the Lord God Almighty bless you abundantly. These are details on the screen. Please continue to support us. Not many people support us. Not many people. Please, if the Lord lays it in your heart to support us, do not hesitate to support us. I have a charity organization and we have about 70 children. There are there are 70, about 70 children right now on our scholarship scheme. There are old people who are carrying out um, physical rehabilitation program 
we have over 20 cases rehabilitating people who are lame, who have club food. Um, please support us. Support our good work. May the Lord God Almighty bless you. Please share our videos. And may God Almighty bless you real good in Jesus' name. See you next time. Please don't forget to share this video and don't forget to subscribe. God bless you. Bye-bye.